realized I wasn't looking at the camera, I was looking at the live screen. It's a problem. That's the worst thing that has happened to anybody ever. So I recently received a comment that made me slightly angry, just a little bit PO'd. It said, Marina, this is extremely sad. Please cease barking up the wrong tree. Pretty yourself up and make yourself attractive to the opposite sex. Become the recipient of male attention. Feel better about yourself. Feel desired. Find a good guy. Find love. And fill that giant, empty, depressing black hole in your heart that comes from a lack of personal relationships. I don't know you personally, so I cannot really judge whether or not this person is onto something. This was a comment on a video about sexual harassment, mind you. What? That's terrible. So I've got some, some feelings, some emotions, some burning rage, perhaps. You seem very calm. I admire that. Let's just completely ignore the fact that this was a video talking about unwanted male attention from strangers on the street. Was it unwanted male attention or sexual harassment? Sexual harassment, mind you. Ah, okay. This was not a video about finding love. This was a video about not wanting to be sexually harassed when I'm going about my day trying to get shit done and not wanting to deal with gross comments from men that I have no desire or intention of ever getting to know. I understand why you wouldn't want to deal with gross comments, but what would be the difference if you actually wanted to get to know someone? Would you enjoy a gross comment in that case, or would the comment just not seem gross if you were attracted to the person making it? I need to understand what you are talking about. But whatever, I said pretty much everything I wanted and needed to say in that video, which I will link if you want to watch, but that is not what I want to talk about today. Oh, great. Then I'll go watch that one. So a video has been going around in the last couple weeks entitled 10 Hours of Walking Around NYC as a Woman. Oh no, that's what you were talking about. Hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? Somebody's acknowledging you. Oh, She's in hate with you. Oh, bless you. Hey. hey, baby. Hey, beautiful. A lot of women and news sources have applauded the video for presenting an experience that almost all women have to deal with on a regular, if not daily, basis. What experience? Being harassed by black people? At least in your clip, 100% of the comments were uttered by African Americans. But no, that would be terribly racist, wouldn't it? But stereotyping all men, that's acceptable, right? Selective evidence. First of all, what constitutes sexual harassment? I really like Hollaback's definition of harassment. But oh, you like that definition? Street harassment is a form of sexual harassment that takes place in public spaces. At its core is a power dynamic that constantly reminds historically subordinated groups, women and LGBTQ folks, of their vulnerability for assault in public spaces. Further, it reinforces the ubiquitous sexual objectification of these groups in everyday life. So, according to that definition, only historically subordinated groups can be harassed. Let's look at the legal definition. Harassment. The act of systematic and or continued unwanted and annoying actions of one party or a group, including threats and demands. The purposes may vary, including racial prejudice, personal malice, an attempt to force someone to quit a job or grant sexual favors. Okay, that's very specific, but what about the colloquial definition of the word? Harassment. The act or an instance of harassing or disturbing, pestering or troubling repeatedly. Persecution. Okay. To harass. 1. To disturb persistently. Torment as with troubles or cares, bother continually, pester, persecute. 2. To trouble by repeated attacks, incursions, etc., as in war or hostilities, harry, raid. So, no matter what definition of the word we look at, the act of harassment needs to be systematic or persistent. Ten different people who didn't coordinate their attack don't constitute harassment. A guy yelling, what's up, babe, is not harassment. I understand it may be annoying, but that's it. You see, that's the problem when you redefine a word that has a legal meaning. 
you just take away its power. I'm just going to clear up a couple of myths that I've been seeing a lot recently pertaining to sexual harassment. Catcalling. These assumptions do an injustice to both women and men. Some of these assumptions include men having no control over their sexual urges, which most men know is bullshit. This idea paints all men as potential rapists. I agree that that is a toxic idea that can seriously harm interhuman relationships. Women just can't take a compliment. You don't get to decide for a woman whether or not she should take something as a compliment. No. But I can decide whether something is meant to be a compliment. If you tell me I gave a good presentation in class or that you like my outfit, then chances are I will gladly accept those compliments because they're genuine and they make me feel good. How am I supposed to know that saying you got a nice ass doesn't make you feel good? The problem is that guys making a compliment are supposed to know that in advance. You know harassment isn't a compliment when hey you look beautiful can escalate to fuck you bitch in 0.2 seconds. I agree, but there was no example for that in the clip you showed. You wouldn't mind if it was someone attractive harassing you. The key factor of sexual harassment is that it's unwanted. Every compliment to a stranger in any situation can be unwanted. It doesn't matter how attractive the person harassing you is as long as it makes you feel uncomfortable or demeaned. Okay, so you have established that it doesn't make a difference to you whether or not you are attracted to the person commenting on you. Except if it doesn't make you uncomfortable which is entirely subjective. Street harassment is harmless. Well, last month, two women were brutally attacked on separate occasions simply for rejecting unwanted advances from strange men. Remember when you said that not all men were potential rapists? So I can't even say hi to a woman without being labeled a sexual predator. It's sometimes hard to make definitive statements about what does and doesn't count as sexual harassment because you use the word harassment the way you please. Also, if you're hearing that the majority of women have to deal with frequent sexual harassment and on top of that have to worry about being assaulted or killed for speaking up about it. Which this woman was clearly afraid of when she walked through the streets for 10 hours. And your main concern is that you can't hit on strangers you see on the street, then I would reconsider your fucking priorities. I'm pleasantly surprised you didn't say privileges. So, in summary. This video was about an unwanted compliment's potential to be creepy, which you consider to be a form of harassment, and many people don't, including women. This was a comment on a video about sexual harassment, mind you. Well, the jury is out on that one. Part of the reason I wanted to address this comment today is because Kristen of Stuff Mom Never Told You put out a video addressing a similar comment from a man commenting on her makeup and appearance rather than the content of the video. So we are talking about makeup now? I'm not an expert on that, but okay. There are definitely many social pressures in place that kind of uh, pressure women into wearing makeup. And in my experience, most of those pressures are not man-made. In fact, I don't know a single heterosexual guy who cares about your makeup. Most men tend to be annoyed with the amount of time many women need to apply it, for minimal effect. But that's just anecdotal. The beauty industry obviously is a big one that targets women's self-esteem. Any industry does that in order to get people to buy their products. We're also constantly bombarded with images of impossibly beautiful women. Nobody is impossibly beautiful. There are people who look like this. And there are men who look like this. Advertisers use attractive people in order to sell their products. And you can achieve a body like that. You just need to work out hard. Mediocrity isn't appealing. Most of the time these images are also photoshopped, so the women in these pictures don't even really look the way that they're being portrayed as. And if you consider that to be the way you need to look like, work for it. If you don't, don't. Oh my god, why don't I look like that? I'm feeling so much pressure. There have also been numerous court cases where women refuse to wear makeup at work, but then they'll get comments from employers saying things like you look tired or unprofessional, and then they'll be asked to wear makeup. And if they don't comply, then their job is put into jeopardy. And that is wrong. At least if you are working in a field where appearance doesn't matter. If you are working as a model or something, that's totally fine. I've also seen posts online from women lamenting, lamenting, I don't know how to say it. Lament. The fact 
that men look great without having to wear makeup, whereas women are unattractive when they don't wear makeup. Perfect face becomes normalized, and the image of an imperfect, bare-faced woman is disheveled and unattractive. Says the woman wearing lipstick, rouge or something on her cheeks, and she has a little Eye of Horus thing going on. But then we see a pushback to this from well-meaning men who are aware that women are socialized and often pressured to wear makeup, so they give their two cents on the matter, even if it's not really asked for. Very condescending. They say things like, I think you look beautiful without makeup, I prefer it, you shouldn't wear any because you're just so pretty without it. Then what am I supposed to say? Without realizing that they're only adding to this pressure by telling women yet again what they should or shouldn't do with their face. Again, what am I supposed to say? I'm going to skip most of her makeup talk, because like most heterosexual men, I really don't care. Maybe what is on my face or what I do to my hair or what clothes I'm wearing have nothing to do with that. And at least I wouldn't discuss it if that wasn't the entire point of your video. Unless I'm specifically discussing makeup right now. See? Which, sorry, is still not an invitation to comment on it. I think it is. That's the issue you chose to discuss on YouTube, mind you. Most of the time, I don't want your opinion. Fuck you too. There's also this whole idea of choice feminism where whether or not a woman chooses to wear makeup or not to wear makeup is inherently feminist because she's making that decision for herself, which I understand is a nice idea in theory, but we also need to recognize that there are a lot of social pressures in place and women don't make decisions usually in a vacuum. Nobody does. There are always background factors, but it is still your choice. This is my problem with you. In your eyes, I'm guilty of you feeling pressured to pretty yourself up just by being a heterosexual man. There is nothing I can do to cleanse myself of that guilt, of my original sin. If I tell you that you don't need to put on any makeup, you think I'm pressuring you. If I say nothing at all, I'm silently condoning this oppression of yours. I'm guilty no matter what, just because of my sex. But you are not responsible for perpetuating that standard by willingly submitting to it. You do have free will, you know? You can choose not to wear makeup if that's what you want. But somehow, your vanity is my fault. As a man, I'm facing certain standards of beauty too. And I choose not to submit to them. Mainly because I'm too lazy to get muscular and strong. I'm comparably fit and that's all I need. And I'm not going to complain about the fact that professional models and athletes have nicer bodies than me. That's their job. Basically, if you wear makeup, that's fine, and if you don't wear makeup, that's also fine. There are also a lot of self-esteem issues that can arise from the ridiculous beauty standards placed on women. And men. Wearing makeup or not wearing makeup doesn't make you better or worse, it's just something that you do with your face. I thought it was something the patriarchy does to your face. There's also quite a bit of creativity and self-expression that can go into wearing makeup. I think makeup artists are fucking wizards and have magic powers. Leave makeup alone then. Go back to explaining how you are oppressed as an Asian American and how colorblindness is racism at its purest. So today we're going to talk a little bit about colorblindness. A lot of people grow up nowadays under the assumption that it's a good thing to be colorblind, which means that you don't judge people based on their race. However, the problem with this idea is that it assumes that racial prejudice no longer exists. So you can't just not be a racist. <laughs> By the way, you seem dangerously colorblind when you selected that clip. That giant, empty, depressing black hole in my heart is just something that's there because I'm the spawn of Satan. Ah, nice and sassy Marilyn Monroe reply there. Listen, I think that catcalling is a rather stupid way of flirting. I've never done it because I prefer making witty remarks in conversation. But I'm sorry, if somebody is catcalling you, you are not being harassed. You are just being whiny and I don't care. You get a nice mouth, by the way. 